Welcome back. This is the second video in the analysis of strip line junction resonator. And I, as I have mentioned in the previous video, uh, the steps of the analysis of strip line junction generator will be represented, uh, sorry, strip uh, junction uh, circulator. Uh, the analysis, it would be presented into four videos. So this is the second video of this series. Uh, in the previous video, we have reached that the electric and magnetic fields inside uh, the ferrite resonator can be represented by EZ and HFI, and in addition, there is H rho. Uh, but now we are going to talk about uh, HFI specifically because the resonant frequency is obtained from cancelling or uh, obtaining H phi equals zero at rho equals A according to the boundary condition that we have perfect magnetic uh, conductor on the side wall of uh, the ferrite resonator while we have a perfect conductor at the top and the bottom sides of uh, the ferrite resonator and we said that uh, for a special case when uh, the biasing magnetic field H0 is zero and the uh, saturation magnetization is zero. In this special case, in the case of unbiased for right medium, uh, the value of mu, it would be mu naught directly and the value of kappa, it would be zero. And in this case, uh, the magnetic field H5 of the mood N will satisfy that it would be zero at rho equals a if the value of j dash n of k a equals zero and from this we obtain the resonant frequency uh, for the dielectric resonator of the ferrite resonator uh, and we said that the resonant frequency of the mode one one tm one one zero it would be omega naught, it would be x naught, where x here is 1.841 over the radius A of the ferrite uh, disk multiplied by the square root of epsilon mu. Epsilon is the permittivity of the ferrite medium, and mu E in the case of unmagnetized ferrite is simply uh, mu naught. And we said that this is a resonant frequency of the dominant mode in a uh, circular resonator. Uh, for right, uh, circle for right resonator, uh, and it should be noted here, it is independent on uh, the direction phi. So, if I assume that the amplitude of a n is zero and the mode is only is minus n, so it is simply j dash n of k rho equals zero at rho equals a. On the other hand, if the mode minus n is zero and we are only uh, calculating for the mode a plus n, so the resonant condition is also j dash n of k a equals zero. So this resonant condition is uh, valid for either the mode plus n or mode minus n. The question now: What will be the situation if we have DC biasing magnetic field? If we have DC biasing magnetic field, in this case, H phi of n is composed of two moods, one for plus n and one for minus n, and here now, kappa is not zero, if it is biased by magnetic field, so when the ferrite is magnetized, there are two possible resonant modes. Uh, assume that we are going to say that the value of a plus n is not zero, while the value of a minus n is zero, so we are talking about the mood plus n. For the mode plus n, in this case, the condition for the resonant mode, it would be that h phi equals zero when rho equals a. So this condition is, it would be simply that j dash n of k a plus n multiplied by kappa over k rho here, it would be replaced by a. So it would be k a mu j n of k a is zero. So this is the reason condition for the mood plus n. 
If I'm looking for the reason condition for the mode minus n, I'm going to assume that the amplitude of a plus n is zero. So in this case, the reason condition for the mode minus n it would be j dash n of k a minus n kappa over k a mu multiplied by j n of k a is equal to zero. So the difference between the two resonant modes for plus n and minus n in this case, it would be in the sign here. This would be plus and this would be minus. This means that the resonant conditions for the mode n equal 1, assume that the value of n equals 1. Uh, so if I'm talking about plus 1 or minus 1, so the resonant condition mode, it would be simply kappa, here n is 1, over mu multiplied by x, assuming that k a is x, kappa over mu a, mu multiplied by x, multiplied by j1 of x plus j1 dash of x equals 0. For the second mode, it would be kappa over mu x j1 x minus j1 dash x equals 0. For the case of unmagnetized fluoride media, the value of kappa it would be zero. So the resonant condition it, in most cases it would be j one dash of x is zero, which we have already obtained in the previous video. Now we have two conditions where the value of x here is k multiplied by a, and a is the radius of uh, the fluoride disc. Uh, from this point of view, it can be noted that the result show some non-reciprocal property of the circulator because the mode plus n is propagating with a frequency or with resonant at frequency different from the mode f minus n. Uh, the question now, what will be the resonant modes for plus or minus? So in this case, uh, we can say that changing the polarity of kappa, uh, assuming that I have interchanged uh, the biasing magnetic field, so interchanging the biasing magnetic field will interchange the sign of kappa. So interchanging the biasing magnetic field will interchange the value of kappa or the sign of kappa. Interchanging the sign of kappa it will interchange the moods. So, for example, if Omega plus is resonant mood for n equal plus 1 when kappa is positive and omega minus is the resonant frequency for mood n minus 1 when kappa is positive. Now, if I have interchanged the polarity of the biasing magnetic field, the value of kappa it would be negative kappa. In this case, Omega minus, it would be the resonant mode for uh, n equal 1. And omega plus, it would be the resonant mode for uh, n equals minus 1. It will be interchanged. That's what we are seeing here. Changing the sign of kappa, or in other words, changing the polarity of the bias, leads to the other routes. So we are going to change the direction of the propagation or propagation in opposite direction of y. Uh, now, let us look at this equation for plus or minus and assume that the root for plus is x plus and the root for minus is x minus. So, and we said that the value of x is simply k multiplied by a and k is effectively omega square root mu multiply uh, mu effect mu x ordinary multiplied by epsilon so from this we can that uh, by replacing the value of x to be k a and to replacing the value of k by omega square root mu epsilon so we can say that the resonant frequencies omega plus or minus it can be represented as x plus or minus over the value of a multiplied by the square root epsilon multiplied by mu extraordinary. Okay. Now assuming that the value of kappa over mu is very small. 
if gamma over mu is very small, this means that effectively the x plus and x minus are quite close to x naught, which was for the unbiased uh, right disk. So in this case, if we assume that gamma over mu is very small, effectively the value of omega plus and omega minus are quite close to omega naught. So omega plus and omega minus are quite close to omega naught, which was already obtained by x naught over a square root mu uh, square root epsilon mu x or mu naught. So actually, the value of x plus and x minus or omega plus and omega minus are quite close to omega naught. So we can approximate the problem. Okay, if it is quite close, we can say that all right, we are going to replace the value of the Bessel function g of x in terms of Taylor series around the value of x naught. So we are going to say j1 of x is approximately j1 of x naught plus x minus x naught multiplied by the first derivative of the function so g1 dash of x naught this is generally the Taylor series uh, f of x equal f of x naught plus x minus x naught multiplied by f dash of x naught and plus x minus x naught squared over 2 uh, multiplied by uh, j double dash of x naught and so on this is Taylor series uh, now for the value j1 of x0, we said that the value of j1 x0 is the value and j1 dash of x0 is 0 because the condition or the resonant condition for uh, the dominant mode of the unbiased for right uh, disk is that j1 dash of x0 is 0 which we have already said here j dash of 1 <coughs> of x naught which is ka 0 so from this condition <coughs> we say that j1 dash of x naught is 0 so this term is 0 this means that j1 of x is nearly equal to j1 of x naught on the other hand the second term j1 dash of x j1 dash of x it would be nearly j1 dash of x0 plus x minus x0 j1 double dash of x0 double dash here means that the second derivative because here I'm talking about the first derivative so it would be nearly the first derivative at x0 plus x minus x0 multiplied by the second derivative at x0 as we mentioned j one dash of x naught is zero. So the remaining term here it would be x naught minus x multiplied by j one dash or the second derivative of x naught. All right. Effectively, the second derivative of the Bessel function of type one it can be obtained as one minus the arg one minus one over the argument squared multiplied by j one of x. So we can replace this by minus one minus 1 over x naught j1 of x the remaining part it would be x minus x naught so based on the approximation that the value of x the x plus and x minus are quite close to x naught we are going to expand j1 of x and j1 dash of x in terms of j1 of x naught and j1 dash of x naught to obtain that j1 of x is nearly j1 of x0 and j1 dash of x is nearly minus x minus x0 multiplied by 1 minus 1 over x0 squared multiplied by j1 of x0. Now we are going to take these approximations in this equation. So the resulting uh, characteristic equation in this case would be gamma over mu x j1x plus j1 dash of x equals 0 would be kappa over mu x naught because we are transferring it around x naught kappa over mu x naught multiplied by j1 x naught 
plus or minus, it would be multiplied by minus, so it would be minus or plus x plus or minus minus x naught over 1 multiplied by 1 minus 1 over x naught multiplied by j1 of x naught j1 of x naught here and j1 of x naught here and this equals 0 so we can eliminate j1 of x naught so effectively the characteristic equation in this case it would be as simple as this form in this case by solving this equation we can obtain that the two solution or the two modes here x plus or minus equals nearly x naught multiplied by 1 plus or minus 0.418 kappa over mu x plus or minus so it be simply nearly x naught multiplied by 1 plus or minus 0.418 kappa over mu this simply is obtained as follows uh, we are going uh, to take uh, this term to take this term on the other side and we are going to multiply or by dividing this term by 1 minus 1 over x naught squared where x naught is 1.841 so this term is nearly unity so the remaining term is Kappa over mu x naught, 1 over x naught is nearly 0.418. So the value of x plus or minus in terms of x naught, it would be x plus or minus is nearly x naught multiplied by 1 plus or minus 0.418 kappa over mu. Now from x plus or minus, if we have obtained x plus or minus, we can obtain omega plus or minus. We say that, okay, omega plus or minus is simply x plus or minus over a square root epsilon mu e. Here, omega plus or minus means that the resonant frequency for the mode plus n and the resonant frequency for the mode minus n when the ferrite circular disk is biased by magnetic field. So, we have two resonant modes. And they are quite close and they are around the resonant mode of the unbiased ferrite medium. So in this case, the value of omega plus according to the value of x plus or minus. So omega plus or minus, it would be, I'm going to take x naught, not to, uh, x plus or minus in this form and apply this. Effectively, x naught over a square root epsilon mu e is simply omega naught. So this means that omega plus or minus nearly equals omega naught multiplied by 1 plus or minus 0.418 kappa over mu. Once again, if I return to unbiased case, the value of kappa it will be 0. And in this case, the mode plus n and the mode minus n will have the same resonant frequency which is omega naught. Now for the biased magnetic field, we have two resonant modes, one for positive n and one for negative n, such that the resonant frequency for negative n, omega minus, is slightly less than omega naught, which is the resonant frequency for unbiased for right disk, and omega plus, which is the resonant frequency for plus n mode, is slightly greater than the resonant mode of Omega naught, which is the resonant frequency for unbiased magnetic. So, from this, we, conclu we concluded that when we are biasing the ferrite disk with a DC magnetic field, we will have two different resonant modes. One for plus one and one for minus one. Assuming that I'm talking about the lowest mode, the lowest value of N, one plus one and the other is minus one. And these two modes has omega minus and omega plus such that omega minus is less than omega naught and omega naught is less than omega plus. Now we have separated the problem by using biasing magnetic field into two modes. The question now, how to control these two modes such that the power from board 1 will add at board 2 and cancel at board 3. 
to obtain the operation of the circuit. This is what we are going to discuss in the following two videos. Okay? And once again, this video is video number two in the analysis of uh, straight line junction uh, circuit. We have other two videos to complete this analysis. All right? Okay.